Hey YouTube, it's Heiko in my garage sitting on a BMW Airhead, VW bus in the background, all is good, right? I am making this introduction to a short video that I'm going to uh, post hopefully later today. Um, it's a follow-up to the most recent video that I posted, an unboxing of a silent hectic electronic ignition. I needed a tool for the install of this uh, electronic ignition system. And uh, since, you know, even Amazon delivery times are pretty crazy these days, um, I decided to make this tool, which is pretty easy. And uh, why I'm making this introduction, which is kind of unlike my channel, I wanna improve video quality. I wanna put out a little bit better product. And therefore, um, I have invested in some new editing software that I will try to use in the next future video. And uh, yeah, we'll see if that turns out. I'm currently still using my cell phone, which has a really good camera, uh, but very limited memory space and very limited battery life to try to make those videos. Um, I have those sections where I'm rambling in videos. I'm going to try to minimize that or cut them out or speed the video up. Um, I also wanted to give you a quick outlook into the future. So we did the unboxing of the Silent Hectic Ignition. Today in this video, we're going to uh, build a tool. The video has already been filmed. And uh, the Silent Hectic Ignition has already been installed in my airhead. The ignition is working fine. My bike has a couple other little issues. And I'm a member on a email group called Airheads. And uh, those guys, they give me tons of suggestions what the cause of the issue could be. I made a quick little list for myself and I'm gonna systematically work through all those uh, suggestions. And I will of course take you along. So we're gonna make a little bit more a polished video in the future. I'm gonna uh, brush up on my editing skills and sooner or later, I'm going to upgrade the camera, set up maybe some lighting in here, maybe get rid of some of my junk to make uh, my garage look a little bit more like a nice workplace, not where I constantly have to trip over things and climb over things to get to my actual work. And uh, in all this, I will, uh, will try to take you along. And uh, yeah, I thank you for your subscription. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now is the chance. Push the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you get notifications. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like certain things, please comment. Keep it civil. You know, I am not claiming to be an expert on anything that I'm doing. Um, I'm just, you know, a DIY mechanic in my own uh, four walls trying to... Uh, make entertaining videos. Thank you guys. And now we're gonna get into building a piston stop. I would uh, make a lot of video of uh, how to make a piston stop for a proper timing, adjustment, finding top dead center, that kind of deal. Um, I'm using an old 14 millimeter NGK spark plug from a vehicle that I don't even own anymore. Uh, we're just going to put it in my vise here and then we're going to saw around the, the very top edge of the metal here and then we can punch out the punch out the center electrode and the insulator and we're just going to use my little trusty chop saw by hand real quick of course i could get power tools out and all that but it's unnecessary. It's all very soft material here. Oh yeah, let me let me show you real quick what I'm even cutting off. Can you even see my hand? So right up here, where my fingernail runs, right that edge, we're gonna cut around this. And when you hit, uh, when your saw blade hits the insulator. You will be able to tell that it's much harder so your, your the teeth of your saw blade will slip right over it so right there and then you just keep turning it around 
until you get this all the way around the spark plug. You can even hear that when it starts slipping. And just keep going. around already it's pretty quick there you go so then this little ring comes off and then pretty much the insulator is completely visible from the top now. Now we're just gonna put it in the vise, grab the ground electrode, bend that out of the way, take a punch and a hammer and give it a couple of whacks. And I'm dropping everything off my workbench. No. Nope. And the insulator comes right out. And then um, now we have a, a hollow threaded part with a bent ground electrode. The inside of this here is roughly eight millimeters ID. Um, so now I was thinking what kind of thread size would I tap this with and uh, M10 just so happened to need a eight millimeter hole to properly uh, get that threaded. So uh, we just need eight millimeters. Um, I'm gonna grind this off real quick. Uh, the ground electrode clean up both ends and then we're gonna start tapping. So I'm gonna pause you here for a second. Just run over to my belt sender. So now I have uh, both ends relatively nice and flat. We wanna deburr the the inside clamp this down here nicely uh, let's see how are we gonna deburr this um, with my favorite deburr tool If you have a nice little chamfer up at the top edge of that opening, I don't even know if you can see. Yep. <laughs> Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. There you go. You have a nice little chamfer, makes the tabs go in nicer and easier. I have uh, metric tabs for all the standard sizes, and they always come in set of, set of three. Uh, <coughs> excuse me set of threes, one that starts it, one that kind of does the heavy lifting, and then the last one that finishes it. So you just uh, have to have the whole drill to the proper size, and then you take the starter one, put a little bit of some oil on there, and then stick it into your eight millimeter hole that we already had in there. Where's the handle? Oh, there. Behind you. There we go. All right, and then try to get it started all nice and straight and level. Kind of like so. The 
You always want to make a couple turns and then break the shavings. And then here and there, maybe even take it out and get the, the stuff out of there. So you tap it. And you can add a little bit more oil if you like. And then just keep going. I have a book, um, kind of like a reference guide uh, from Germany um, that, that I used when I was still an industrial mechanic over there. And it, it literally gives you uh, all the the drill sizes for every tap that you could potentially use. Uh, but like a rule of thumb, everything that's, let's say five millimeters and larger, you just take the M10 times 0.8. So M10 times 0.8, 10 times 0.8 is eight millimeters. So you need about an eight millimeter hole to be able to run a M10 tap into it. And that works with M8, that works with M6, that works with M12. Uh, it's, it's a rule of thumb, it's not precise. If you want it uh, really nice and easy and, and get a perfect thread each time, then go into one of those reference guide books and look it up or online. Nowadays, everything is online. All right, look at that. So the starter one, the, the one that has one ring on it, tap is already through and then we're going to take that out move it here number two there's two rings on on the bottom here a little bit of some oil and i'm just using a three-in-one multi-purpose oil that's perfectly acceptable as a lubricant for some tapping. And now you just really have to make sure you're not cross threading this because then you're going to destroy the thread that you just created with a starter one. So that's pretty good. It already sounds a little different. So the first tap going in the starter um, kind of has the the heavy lifting to do it cuts like 50 percent of the thread and then the other two just do 25 percent at a time so this is much easier to turn and now we're almost through already with this one No. Hello. Oh. Some of the metal shavings are kind of making it hard to get it out. And this one, and then looks pretty good inside there. And now the finishing one. And this is kind of the hardest one to line up with your already existing thread. It has a very short taper here in the beginning. So you really want to make sure you, you line it up with your already existing thread. So that's good. And then put my handle back on here. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, no cross threading. Or else we're going to start over. Now we're going to take another spark plug. Uh -oh. The flutes in here, they're pretty large. So in this case, I, I don't want to go backwards and then kind of get it stuck in there and then, uh, um, you know, rip up my freshly cut thread so I'm just going through 
from start to finish. And uh, if I would have air over here, I would definitely blow into this once in a while. Get stuck in there and, and damages the surface. But I think we, we got it. All right, so now we have a 14 millimeter spark plug piece that is threaded 10 millimeters on the inside. Okay, I don't know if you guys can uh, take a peek in here. Nice threaded in there. Uh, still a little bit of a taper. I think I'm gonna, I'm going to run my deburring tool, or maybe even, let's see, a step drill. No, let's not do that. I'd rather like use a. What do you guys call those? Let's take one of those now. And a cordless drill. I want to make sure that um, I don't have any. Okay, and now we're going to run the the finishing tab through this one more time from the other end. I just want to make sure that my screw that I'm going to put in here doesn't leave any metal shavings inside the cylinder head of my motorcycle. So we're just going to clean this out one more time. Just make sure you don't cross thread it. This would be kind of a disaster. Come on now. Maybe from this side. No. That would be kind of dumb if I ruin it right now. So let's um, try to not cross thread it. I just wanted to have a nice little 45 degree um, taper. And then I'm going to blow it out, clean it out with brake cleaner from both sides. Make sure it's really clean. Yeah, this is good. All right, so this is good. Nice and threaded. So I'm going to clean this out really well. I'm going to uh, deeper and countersink this side as well. And then I have a, a 10 millimeter bolt that uh, literally goes, it's supposed to go, oh my goodness, what's the story here? I thought we we're all the way through. So I don't know what the story is. Sometimes, especially if I pinch this too hard with my vice here, I might deform this round shape. All right, let me go through. Yeah. It's all the way through. Let me just blow it out real quick, guys. I'll be back in a second. to run an airline over here to near my workbench it's really kind of a dumb idea my compressor is on the other side of the garage and I do have a 50 foot um, reel there on the wall but I always forget to pull it over and then I'm always running zigzag in my garage to get to some air all right so this is much better all right it's just the shavings and the little slivers so now we have a 10 millimeter bolt that now sticks out right at the other end. And um, I might need a longer one because I also want a, uh, a nut on here, kind of a, a uh, what is it, a lock nut that kind of counters against this. And I will also, whichever bolt I use, 
round off the very tip of it, round it off nice and smooth because that's the surface that's going to go against your aluminum piston. Um, when you do that and you stop your piston to uh, figure out your top dead center, which we're going to go through uh, in the next video, you definitely have to be really careful. You don't want to nick or dent your piston. That's why this has to be really nice and smooth and round. I don't know if I this is long enough because you want to be able to lock this bolt in place. You don't want it to um, change its setting. So maybe, maybe this is long enough. I don't know exactly how close the piston gets to, an, to a spark plug. This might be a little short, so I'm just going to get a longer bolt. And then I will show you in my next video uh, what this looks like. It's going to be the bolt plus a nut plus this piece. And everything is going to be nice and clean and rounded off and smooth. All right, guys. This is how you make a piston stop. Almost. Almost done. All right, you guys take care. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up, please. Thank you. Bye.